Hi everyone, I'm Zoe Hawkins here with Sumo Logic, and I have two amazing guests with me. Uh, and we're going to be talking all things uh, flex pricing. But before we get started, Joe Kim, our CEO, Michael Cookie, our VP of Product Marketing, thank you so much for joining me. Glad to be here. Thanks for having us. <laughs> That's what you're forced to say that I know. Um, okay, cool. So we're going to start, Joe. I know you have been on something of a, a world tour. You've been talking to tons of different customers. Um, it's always great to hear straight from them. And you know, I think you've heard some recurring conversation. You've had some recurring conversations with them about issues with paying by ingest. So I was hoping you could kind of take us through some of the things that that customers have been saying to you. Yeah, I, I guess I guess it sort of is like a world tour uh, that I've been at. Um, you know, it's been funny because uh, it took me a while to get back into the uh, the office here in uh, Redwood City, California, at headquarters. But you know, it's not like I wasn't traveling, right? I, I was uh, all over Europe uh, just last week. You know, meeting customers in Germany and and uh, the UK. And then the previous week, at, you know, before that, I was in Atlanta meeting with a whole bunch of uh, customers there as well. And so. You know, as we've been having these discussions, um, you know, it's interesting in that, you know, when I have more of a technical discussion with them, uh, a lot of the cases in terms of, you know, why they should try to centralize, um, you know, where their log capabilities are and sending it to one place and all the pros in terms of doing that. A lot of times uh, that leads to more of a commercial discussion than anything else. Um, and it's not because they don't understand the value that they would get from sending everything to a, a single source. Uh, but, you know, in terms of the pricing specifically, um, you know, it's not uh, aligned with uh, them wanting to do that, right? Because the more data that you send uh, with sort of the traditional way of uh, folks that are in our space charging for ingest, they're actually disincented to send all of the data. And the I think the more tough the macro conditions are, the more that becomes a sensitive topic to them. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. And and so, um, you know, that's why we've launched Flex, Flex Pricing, you know, this $0 ingest. Uh, Cookie, can you give us a little bit of context about what that actually means? Like we say $0 ingest, what is that? Yeah, uh, absolutely. We're super excited uh, about this uh, new offer that we're bringing to market. Really what it's about is removing the penalty and the cost for ingesting logs across your enterprise. So this is unlocking that limit uh, that Joe just talked about so that customers are able to reconsider their uh, their approaches to how they're leveraging logs across the enterprise. It means you can consolidate security logs with application logs, with cloud logs, uh, and it means your teams are all working on that data in, in a single location, which is super valuable. Um, the way it works is uh, we've removed the uh, the charge and the, and the consumption of credits uh, for ingesting data. So literally customers can, without abandonment, send logs to the platform. There's a really small stipend for, uh, for storing data over longer periods. And we really wanted to focus on it, the value exchange with the customers. So we charge based on uh, analytics. And uh, for us, that's called a scan or a query that's run across data that's stored on the platform. And so you may have uh, one gigabyte of data that you're scanning extremely often and analyzing closer to real time. And then there might be larger sets of data that you're analyzing uh, less frequently. And now you're only getting charged uh, based on that analytics. And we think that basically translates to business value. So when you're extracting business value from the data, you know that's when, uh, that's when you're gonna be consuming credits on the platform. I love that log with abandon, <laughs> log everything. Right. I love it. Um, okay, so you know everybody loves to use this word disruptive. It yep. No longer has any meaning, uh, but we use it because why not? Like you know, we say this is going to be disruptive. So you know, Joe, can can you explain a little bit about the the status quo and what's been disruptive? You know, why why do we need something different? How is this so uh, unique? Yeah, I, I, I mean, maybe we use a different word than disruptive, maybe somewhere down the road, but um, I really do think this is a very disruptive uh, pricing model. You know, if you think about sort of where things were kind of in our space, um, you know, a lot of the capabilities were really on premise uh, in terms of the amount of data that was being generated, uh, you know, via logs or any other, you know, type of information around observability or security. It wasn't exploding the way that it is exploding right now, right? And as be business become more and more digital and they're moving more services to the cloud or utilizing more services that are sitting in the cloud, 
um, and ingesting all of that data, the universe has gotten much, much more complicated. So a lot of the technical capabilities have started to catch up. So you see, you know, we're very cloud native. You've seen other, you know, more cloud native solutions that are now appearing in the market. Uh, and then also folks that are on-prem that are kind of trucking their right way along and trying to do stuff in the cloud, right? It, it's very difficult to do that transformation. Uh, but also what we ended up doing as an industry is carrying over a lot of the legacy pricing models from on-prem into the cloud as well. And so a lot of our customers are getting into situations where if they want to still continue to get the same kind of value that they get out of products like ours uh, at Sumo Logic, what ends up happening is the growth of data and the amount that they have to pay us is growing so fast, it's faster than the way that the business might be growing. It's outpacing business growth. And there's no way that's a tenable situation for you know, any of our customers. And so that's led to some bad habits without the change that we are making right now on $0 ingest, where customers are cho choosing to ingest some data and choosing to not ingest other data. And then when they need to be able to go back, when they're hitting an issue, like a security issue, or maybe it's a observability issue, when they try to go back and query on that information and get some analytics, they actually don't have the data all in one place to be able to go do that. So either they drop logs, in which case they'll never get them back, right? And we see a lot of those cases, or they're sending data or the log data into two different sources or more where they, if they want to, let's say, solve a security issue, they have to be able to rehydrate the information from cheaper storage into, for example, a Sumo Logic. And they have to wait hours and hours if they're processing days of information. Or in certain cases, if they want to go back, I don't know, 12 months, right? In, in terms of trying to pinpoint exactly when the security issue had occurred, you know, then you're talking about days for that data to rehydrate. And they're sitting there for the rehydration so that they can run the analytics. And so the way that we see it is there shouldn't be a penalty for that. You should be able to send it all to all into one place. And just like in those situations, when you're ingesting data um, and rehydrating the information, you're going to be paying for it anyway. Let's just get that off the table, go to $0 ingest. And then really when they need that value, they can get to it immediately. And that's basically how the credits will burn down as, as uh, Michael talked about. So a bit of a follow-up question for you. I mean, within this data explosion, you know, we talk about data and I don't know, sometimes it feels like it could, it's amorphous. It can mean so many different things. You know, what, what makes logs so special or so unique inside of that, in that context? Well, I, I think uh, there's many reasons why logs are so special, but the one that I hear most often, uh, Zoe, is that, um, you know, when you go talk to, you know, sort of like the C-level executives, right? The CIOs, the CISOs, et cetera, the CTOs, um, because of sort of all of this digitalization that's happening and utilizing so many services across the board, that the landscape in terms of what you need to observe and what you need to secure has just exploded. Like it's getting much, much more difficult. And so as part of that, what most C-level executives are looking to do is to implement an initiative called, you know, I would kind of put it in quotes, DevSecOps, um, because there's a, a bit of a, a, no, a misnomer on exactly what that means. But as I talk to all of these customers, for them, what it means is how can I get my developers operations and my security people to work closer together, okay? Which is an incredibly easy thing to say, but very, very, very hard to implement, right? And so, you know, my advice to them is to go through and see what the, the biggest sticking point is when they're trying to do that and share with us and see, you know, how we might be able to partner with them uh, to provide the right solution. And time and time again, what they come back is my engineers and my operations people and my security people can't even begin to have the discussion because they're having arguments about what is the right data. Like the security people have the right data. They feel like their data, their data is better than the observability people, et cetera. And they end up with a, uh, almost a fight in between like what is the right data and what is the right tool for you to be able to analyze that data. And so very commonly, and this is sort of in the discussion with them, what they come to is at the end of the day, logs is probably the most atomic level of data that they can capture that no one fights about because it is the level of data that is automatically generated by your infrastructure and also from your applications. It's just happening. It's not something that you have to program up front. It's as developers do their app development, they're going to throw you know errors and things like that into the logs to do troubleshooting. 
And then it is the same thing on the infrastructure end as well. It's going to generate, no matter what the infrastructure component is, if it's networking or if it's servers, et cetera, it's going to throw its own logs. And it's not something that you have to force. It just naturally happens. And so as long as you can bring all of that data together in a single place, um, you end up with less fights around which is the right data. And so what we see very often as people are conversing and working on that data set together is that they can now slowly start working together and really get the value of sort of the DevSecOps initiatives. But it's very important that they do end up centralizing that and agree on sort of like this being sort of the quote unquote system of record in terms of you know where they're gonna take their further value and their discussions moving forward. Fantastic. So, I mean, if we imagine this this ideal world where we're able to to end the the turf warfare, um, you know, and, and people can agree on on that atomic level of logging and and bring it all in, you know, um, my my next question is like, how will this model change the way people work? Um, you know, Cookie, if you want to if you want to take that one, like, how will this unlock our uh, the innovation that people will get from this? Yeah, uh, great. A uh, couple of things there. First of all, this data is super critical. You just heard that from Joe. It's being generated from different technical silos that had different personas and people working on it. And those and these critical signals that you know could be business impacting, observability issues, performance issues, outages, you know, uh, code pushes breaking things, security issues, breaches, etc. You really can't uh, sacrifice any of that data. So this unlocks the ability to bring all that together. We uh, we hear a funny term out in the uh, industry. People say they're doing observability or security by budget, which is literally because they can't afford to do what's right. They have to use their gut and make some decisions ahead of time, and inevitably that leads to mistakes and gaps in visibility and missing data, like like Joe talked about. And so this opens all that up. The other thing is the more data that you bring together, the more powerful your machine learning and your AI is. So immediately, the more data that's in the platform, it's more accurate, it's more insightful, it's driving more business impact with its results. That's a huge piece. Um, you know, to be technical a second, Joe described the requirements of rehydrating data. We're actually bringing this data into our highest performance environment. It scales massively quickly. That's the other thing. You can't do what we're talking about without an instantly scaling platform, right? We, we have peaks and valleys with single customers that are terabytes, hundreds of terabytes in data a day. And our pro our platform can just scale and flex with the, with those capacities. And so we actually had a platform that could lend itself to providing this capability to everybody. So now you've got a place where you've got all your data, you're running much more powerful AI and ML on it. You're doing better anomaly detection and noise reduction, and you're predicting when incidents are happening and you're solving the problems a lot faster. So this is reducing the time to identify where the problem is, it's reducing mean time to resolution, uh, and it's doing it in a single place. So I, there is another term that I used to put quotes around, which is single source of truth, but that's really what's emerging here, where when something is really impacting your business, everybody is very quickly getting to the same facts immediately, and they're solving the problem quicker because there's no finger pointing, uh, again, five, 10 years ago, there was a term mean time to innocence. That never solved a problem. That just said, hey, it's not me. And the DevSecOps initiative is it's everybody. So there may not be a person with the title DevSecOps at your company, but the only way you're going to drive next level observability and security capabilities across these complex apps that Joe mentioned, by the way, these apps are being updated thousands of times a day in, in some cases, you really need to plug your security people and technology and visibility directly into your developers and your cloud operations teams. And so this is basically unlocking the ability to do that. You know, in the, in the past, customers would have to choose what logs to drop or potentially choose what performance they needed those logs in uh, and, and all of that complexity is removed. The other thing I have to mention is this is our full featured platform capability. It is absolutely every feature that we have available on the platform that's being made available in this flex licensing plan. And so we're basically we're, we're providing an enterprise class solution and we're unlocking ingest and we're working with the customer to drive analytic value. And uh, the result should be really big in terms of time savings, cost savings, complexity savings, uh, and, and literally just ratcheting up our ability to predict and stop 
business uh, business critical inc incidents or or uh, outages. Fantastic. I love it. You know, so so we have this vision of, of what our um, customers and partners will gain from this flex licensing, you know, kind of bringing it bringing it a little bit, you know, home as well. You know, we we see people innovating. Um, Joe, what what does that mean for us? Like, how are we going to be able to help our customers and to innovate ourselves with this new paradigm shift with this idea of of logging everything? Yeah, I, I think um, maybe I don't want to get into like level of like, here's what the product roadmap looks like, you know, at, at that layer. But, you know, one of the things that really excited me about sort of the Sumo Logic technology is sort of a lot of the things that Michael talked about. It's infinitely scalable. It's cloud native from the onset. And we continue to keep up with, you know, new technologies. And there's new paradigms that is, uh, you know, appearing now around AI, ML and generative AI and things like that where once you have all of the data, there's much more interesting things that we can do and give additional insights to our customers. And what's interesting for me is like, as I have these discussions, a lot of folks that have already started on the DevSecOps journey, where they have started to bring all this data into a single place, they're getting insights even directly out of the product today that they didn't think that they would be able to get. So I'll give you a technical reason on what that is and then what the actual business outcome could look like is that uh, of all of the similar kind of technologies out there, um, whether people know it or not, if they're using competitive tools, what ends up happening is if you don't structure the log information up front, if you don't create a schema, if you don't tag it, et cetera, whether they know it or not, when that log information comes in and it doesn't fit that schema, you end up dropping the log. Okay, so you lose a lot of the unstructured information without you even knowing that you're losing it. And so all of these products are not the same. There's very, very, very few companies that will also be able to ingest the unstructured information. And we're one of those. And in the cloud, I, you know, I, I don't know how many there would be. I, I almost want to say we're, we're one of the, the one or two uh, in the cloud that does it that way. And so you have all of this now unstructured information that is sitting there in your logs that you've ingested that you can't get anywhere else, where customers are now starting to mine that data. Okay. And so more and more, I'm starting to hear this kind of terminology around, you know, I call it, there's sort of the monitoring and way of doing it and then getting complete observability. That's sort of my verbiage. A lot of the customer kind of tag that they're utilizing is the difference between IT observability and what they consider customer observability. Because yeah. when they can take all the structured information and the unstructured information, and sort of the way that our technology work, works is you can query that info too. We, we have something called schema on demand that you can just query the info just as fast. It's very, very close in terms of speed where they're now getting insights in terms of things that they didn't structure, what is impacting customers, right? And so not only can they say the server went down, but they can say for this specific issue, what does it impact in terms of the customer transaction or the customer experience? And they're able to create that information out of all of this raw data that they have once they start centralizing it. So it's super exciting stuff that they're doing. It's directly what observability and security is doing that they can point to in terms of the company top line. It's an incredible thing that we're seeing happening in terms of innovation and observability space, right? So like moving forward, a lot of our kind of roadmap without getting into too much secret sauce is how can we help our customers do that easier and have more out of the box analytics capabilities moving forward uh, and, and not have to do that kind of one off by each one of our customers. And so moving forward, when we do a lot of these innovations and you'll see this, you know, kind of as a change, I think for, you know, Sumo Logic is I wanna make sure that, you know, these are great thoughts and great innovations, but we wanna make sure that our customers are deeply involved as we release these capabilities into the market. And so there is a design partnership that is starting uh, in terms of the few first sets of analytics capabilities that we're going to be developing, and they're very well-known brands uh, that are out there, that's going to help us to make sure that we hone the technologies for more general purpose across the board. So you'll see more and more innovations coming from us, you know, as you send us more and more of that data. 
Fantastic. Great conversation. Thank you both so much for joining and want to thank everyone for watching. Um, you can learn more. Both of uh, our wonderful guests have blogs live on the Sumo Logic website. You can also visit our pricing page, www.sumologic.com slash pricing. Um, and you can get an estimate and get in touch and ask any other questions that you might have. So I just want to thank you so much, Joe Cookie, for joining today um, and having a great conversation. Thanks, thank Eric. you.